Hello friends, welcome to Dudier Academy. In this video, I have included the respiratory system multiple choice questions with the explanation of answers. And it will be useful for you for all the upcoming examinations uh, like the staff nurse and nursing officer examinations in AIMS, GIPMER, ESI and state PSEs. So let me start first question the most common early symptom of laryngeal cancer is the most common early symptom of laryngeal cancer is options dysphagia airway obstruction hoarseness of voice pneumothorax dysphagia airway obstruction hoarseness of voice and pneumothorax the right answer is hoarseness of voice So the laryngeal cancer it's a malignant tumor of larynx or voice box and hoarseness of voice in CA larynx is direct result of a tumor on the vocal cords and so it is one of the most common warning signs of laryngeal cancer. Second question orange red discoloration of body fluid is caused by orange red discoloration of body fluid is caused by options ethambutol, isoniazid, streptomycin, rifampicin. The right answer here is rifampicin. Rifampicin is an anti-tuberculosis drug and it can cause orange red discoloration of body fluids like tears, sweat, urine and breast milk and all. And so that may result in permanent staining of clothing and contact lenses. So knowledge of this, uh, uh, this thing that is orange red discoloration is there in case of using this drug. So if this knowledge is there means that may decrease the anxiety of patients if uh, this discoloration occurs. Then uh, third question. In a patient with emphysema, the oxygen flow should not exceed. Options 1 liter per minute, 2 liter per minute, 6 liter per minute, 10 liter per minute. In a patient with emphysema, the oxygen flow should not exceed. The right answer is 2 liter per minute. So in case of uh, COPD patients and emphysema patients, they lost their sensitivity to increased levels of carbon dioxide. They lost their sensitivity to increased level of carbon dioxide uh, because uh, the, the mainly the central chemoreceptors are losing their sensitivity to increased level of carbon dioxide and so they no longer respond by increased uh, rate and depth of respiration. So their stimulus to breathe is decreased arterial oxygen concentration their primary drive for breathing is decreased arterial oxygen concentration so if high levels of oxygen is given or administered to the client they loses their respiratory drive and respiratory failure occurs so that is why in copd patients too much oxygen should not be delivered that is the reason okay there first of all the chemoreceptors lost their sensitivity to increased levels of carbon dioxide and their primary drive will be decreased arterial oxygen concentration so if we are giving uh, or administering too much oxygen means they lost that respiratory drive and respiratory failure occurs then question number four the concentration of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the blood are monitored by options chemoreceptors, baroreceptors, beta receptors, all the above. The concentration of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the blood are monitored by. The right answer is chemoreceptors. Chemoreceptors. So, in respiration control, chemoreceptors uh, monitor the partial pressure of oxygen ph and partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood okay chemoreceptors send signals to the respiratory center to control the ventilation and they monitor the partial pressure of oxygen carbon dioxide and ph in blood so the answer here is chemoreceptors next question question number five collapse of alveoli is known as options emphysema atelectasis empyema asthma collapse of alveoli the right answer is atelectasis. So what is emphysema? Emphysema is a type of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease.
characterized by breakdown of elastin and collagen resulting in hyper inf inflation of alveoli so that is the there is hyper inflation of alveoli and atelectasis is collapse of alveoli and empyma is the accumulation of thick purulent fluid in the pleural space and asthma means there is increased responsiveness of airways to variety of stimuli so here the answer is atelectasis then question number six what is the confirmatory test for tuberculosis options bronchoscopy sputum culture chest x-ray tuberculin test what is the confirmatory test for tuberculosis the right answer here is sputum culture so even though uh, x-ray findings uh, skin test the tuberculin test and all provide the presumptive diagnosis of tuberculosis the final diagnosis is made by confirmation with the identification of organism on sputum culture so sputum culture is the most accurate for diagnosis of tuberculosis next question question number seven which test should be done before doing arterial puncture at radial artery which test should be done before doing arterial puncture at radial artery options allen's test romberger's test uh, quickened quickensteads test and caloric test okay allen's test romberg's test quickensteads test and caloric test the right answer here is allen's test so what is allen's test it is done to assess the collateral circulation before performing arterial puncture on the radial artery and if allen's test is positive then the radial artery can be used for puncture so it is used to assess the collateral circulation before performing the arterial puncture then other test that is romberg's test it is the test of balance romberg's test assess the patient's balance or it is a method of quantifying the balance then quickensteads test it detect the block in the circulation of cerebrospinal fluid in the spinal canal it detects the block in circulation of cerebrospinal fluid in the spinal canal that is it is done by briefly compressing the jugular veins then caloric test so caloric stimulation is done to diagnose the damage to acoustic nerve which is involved in hearing and balance so that is related to caloric test is related to hearing the next question question number 8 which of the following percussion note will you hear while percussing the chest of a patient with pneumothorax which of the following percussion note will you hear while percussing the chest of a patient with pneumothorax options dullness resonance tympani hyper resonance the right answer here is hyper resonance so uh, regarding this percussions important percussion sounds and the source first one resonance resonance is the sound heard in percussing the normal lung tissue it is a low pitched sound of longer duration it is a uh, sound heard on percussing the normal lung then dullness is heard over areas containing greater proportion of tissue or fluid than air so it is a uh, case of in case of atelectasis consolidation presence of fluid in pleural space and all dullness can be heard next is hyper resonance it is an abnormal percussion sound as a result of air trapping that is pneumothorax uh, em emphysema and all this hyper resonance is heard so air trapping or presence of air in a closed to cavity so here the question was in case of pneumothorax what is the sound percussion sound so the answer is hyper resonance then flatness flatness is uh, heard over areas containing greater proportion of tissue than of air so it is an indication of pleural effusion okay flatness is heard in case of pleural effusion then tympani tympani is a drum like sound heard over gastric air bubble or gas filled bubble okay so uh, the source is gastric air bubble or intestinal air next question question number nine suggested flow rate of oxygen to be used with a nasal cannula is suggested flow rate of oxygen to be used with a nasal cannula is 
options 5 to 8 liters per minute 1 to 4 liter per minute 1 to 2 liter per minute 8 to 10 liters per minute the right answer uh, here is 1 to 4 liter per minute suggested flow rate of oxygen with a nasal cannula so here the devices like for nasal cannula the suggested flow rate is 1 to 4 liter per minute and for nasopharyngeal catheter it is 1 to 6 liter per minute 1 to 6 liter per minute and for simple mask it is 6 to 8 liter per minute simple mask it is 6 to 8 liter per minute so these are the low flow systems uh, the low flow devices and the flow rates then question number 10 which cell in the alveoli produce surfactant which cell in the alveoli produce surfactant options type 1 pneumocyte type 2 pneumocyte goblet cells adipose cells the right answer here is type 2 pneumocyte so the main function of type 2 two pneumocytes are production of pulmonary surfactant production of pulmonary surfactant that is it act by reducing the alveolar surface tension it reduces the alveolar surface tension and prevent the collapse of alveoli during expiration and facilitate the expansion during uh, inspiration so the right answer here is type 2 pneumocyst so thank you, thank you for watching the video. 